Trolls, Rob. Mm. Trolls. Mm. Uh, of course, we've been talking a lot about trolls the yeah. last number of, uh, of weeks, ever since the Universal made the decision to pull trolls from the theatrical release, completely blindsiding the movie theaters. They had no idea they were going to do this. There was no communication between Universal and the theaters, their partners, and all that kind of stuff happened. So they put it out. Now, it should be noted that the first Trolls movie made somewhere in the neighborhood of $46 million on its opening weekend. So now Trolls comes out. Now listen, everything, this is a great example that everything is all about perspective and context. Because I got told by somebody connected to the studio that Trolls did not do nearly as well in its opening weekend of coming out on digital this past weekend as universal had hoped. But then we saw, so I'm like, okay, wow. Well, I guess I'm not terribly surprised, but then numbers came out yesterday. They're estimating right now that trolls made somewhere. I initially said 26, but it actually, they're estimating it made somewhere between 22 and $25 million, which listen, I get it. Compared to the $46 million that the first Trolls opened in theaters with, okay, yes, that's disappointing, sure. But I got to be honest with you. I thought that was a pretty damn good number. And I so I reached back out to the same guy yesterday. I'm like, well, I thought you said they were really disappointed. And he said, well, they are because, you know, you taking, they t- were taking consideration. They really thought that the fact that families were stuck at home and they have the kids under the roof and everybody's going crazy and they're looking for something they kind of anticipated that it would be more. And I'm like, okay, I, I get it, but I'll be frank with you. That 22 to 24 to $25 million is more than I thought it was going to get. Yep. I'll tell you that right now. That is more than I thought it was going to get. And I just don't know how, look, this movie's going to lose them money, right? I, I mean, that that's a foregone conclusion. We all knew that the trolls is going to lose money. But I honestly don't think it's going to lose as much money as some people like myself really thought it was at first. I think, like, I get it. Yes, everybody's stuck at home. Maybe you thought that would make more people buy than normally would. I still look at this, Rob, for them, and and I say, you got to look at this as a win. I mean, they're going to lose money, yes, but... How do you not look at that as a win? Because that's more than I think a lot of us thought they were going to get. You hear those numbers, Rob. How do you interpret it? Well, look, like you, I think it is. This is a new paradigm. And and consumers aren't used to this yet. And I'm surprised, like you, I think this is a win because this is something new that nobody really had done before. And this proves, you know, maybe not for a movie like Trolls coming off of Trolls 1, but a $25 million gross is very respectable. And, you know, they're not necessarily sharing that the way they would have to share it with, I mean, I'm sure there's providers, but I'll bet they get a bigger chunk of that than they would if it opened in theaters not, to that Not number. necessarily. iTunes is notorious for how much of a iTunes and things like that. So it's, it's I think it kind of washes out regar- regardless. Oh, maybe, uh, yeah. I mean, the point's I, still, still well made. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, but I still think it's a number. Imagine when consumers are used to this. Imagine when a movie studio can advertise it's available. What if what if what if a, an Avengers movie opened like this and and they'd been pushing it for three months or a year? What would that kind of number be? I mean, what what we're seeing is a new paradigm being created. And 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 for one of the first out of the gates, this is pretty good. I think they raise a good point, though, because we're, we're going to get to an L.A. Times article here in a second, but because they they echo this. But I think one of the things some people like me probably fail to take into consideration that this is a kids animated movie in a time when families have been cooped up at home with their kids for a month. They have nothing else to do, nowhere else to go and not a lot of other entertainment options right now. And maybe that played to its favor. Let's let's take a look for a second here. The LA Times wrote an article about this and they have some really good insight on this. They said the following, uh, talking about Universal's reporting on how much uh, they think they made on this. Uh, LA Times said, said the following. They said, but that information, 
that they got from Universal is tainted by the fact that the vast majority of mm. viewers uh, didn't have, even have the option of seeing at their local cinema. Any data are further skewed by reality that Americans, especially parents, have been cooped up at home for weeks and they are desperate for fresh entertainment options. The movie played on only 21 drive-in theaters. God, I still got to get out to a drive-in theater uh, that have not that have not shut down over fear to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Universal acknowledged that the video on demand numbers are difficult to interpret. OK, so the numbers are difficult to interpret. Maybe they're exaggerating the numbers a little bit. All the ca- Even if, though, Rob, I, I got to say, even if the numbers are off, OK, even if by Universal's own admission, yeah, we're kind of interpreting and the interpretation is difficult to do right now. And even if you take into consideration the context that, yeah, right, this is an unusual circumstance. Families are stuck at home. They're desperate to watch something. Even if you consider this is like a 50% drop practically from what it made in theaters on its first day, even if, even if, even if, I just don't know how you look at this as any kind of a disappointment. I just don't know if you're universal. Why would you why would you at all be disappointed? Now they're putting on a brave PR face saying, Wow, look what we did. But I'm being told behind the doors they're actually concerned about this. But I'm like, why? This is actually, I think, a really good result and frankly a lot better than I thought it would be. Look, I don't think you and I have talked about this, Rob, before, whether it's family films or or movie going or or drive-in theaters or whatever. We have to resist, and I know I have to do this especially, we have to resist the urge to try to interpret anything when we're under such unusual circumstances. I get that. It's There's no such thing as the norm right now. Everything that happens right now is not necessarily indicative or reflective of what our patterns will be once we're not under quarantine and we're not under lockdown and all that kind of stuff. And I get this. I get that. So you, you shouldn't look too hard at any of this stuff as any sort of patterns. But again, I that ain't bad. I mean, it's, I, I, and listen, I'm, I'm the one who's like, wow, this is going to be tragic. Oh boy, this is going to be tragic for Universal. Whoo, they're going to take a bath on this. And I'm the one telling you now, this is not a bad result. Rob, listen, what would be, let's say you're behind the doors at Universal right now and in their war room. What messages are you giving to the executives at Universal? Maybe one, why they shouldn't get too excited by the numbers, but maybe number two, why there is reason to be excited by the numbers. What would be your message to them right now? Well, I would say that, again, like we just talked about, this is the first of many. And and if we were to – look, you can still – across – down the street from my house, there is a Trolls bus station – uh, poster, one of those giant posters, and it says still the poster says available and coming out on movie theater in movie theaters, you know. So the marketing, can you imagine if they marketed this as one of the first direct to streaming world premieres of a major theatrical release? If they had begun their marketing with that months out, so people that were trolls fans could make it an event. This was something that was thrown together at the last minute that did not have the benefit of massive marketing behind it. And it still made 25 million bucks, which shows that people just just from the established infrastructure that's already there, enough people found it where they made that much money. But imagine if you marketed it that way so people knew it was coming. I would say you are at the very bottom of a whole new hill to climb. And this this is a new frontier. You're going to butt up against when this whole COVID-19 thing passes, you're going to butt up against exhibitors, movie theaters. There's going to be a a whole new universe is opening up and we have to decide, you know, it's like the ring in the expanse. When you go through the ring to the next section of the universe where all those planets are to be colonized, what are you going to do now that there's this whole new frontier and how is that all going to work? So See, and I, I I don't know if we're actually on the precipice of a whole new frontier. Again, I think we're we're falling into that trap of trying to interpret what the new normal will look like while we're in really extreme circumstances. Sure. I, and I and true. I wonder I wonder, Rob, tell me what you think about this. I wonder if if they had always planned I wonder how much of, of what I'm calling success, how much of the success of this is attributed to the fact that this was supposed to be a theatrical release film. I wonder if a lot of people might have just overlooked this if it was always meant to be a straight-to-home video movie, but the very fact that it was meant to be a theatrical film, the very fact that it was starting to be uh, um, you know, marketed as a theatrical film, and then the special treat 
Guess what, guys? You can just watch it at home with your bratty kids that you've been, and I'm sure your kids are lovely, with your bratty kids that you've been stuck under the same roof with for a really, really like, I, I wonder how much of that plays into it. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I mean, it's again, it's it's hard to say. You know, there's a lot of variables here, but I would say, look, we have seen massive disruption. Who would have thought in the music industry and say, oh, I don't know, right before Napster came along, who would have thought that that streaming music would have caused such a monstrous disruption in an industry that had been around for a long period of time? Now, streaming services, we watched the rise of them in mere years. Uh, from In five years streaming, the whole landscape completely changed. So I think that, uh, you know, this is but the beginning. And it'll be interesting to see. I think we need more data, more evidence. And it'll be interesting to see when when there's 10 movies that have debuted this way, big theatrical movies that they, that even are sequels to a big theatrical film that still have a theatrical budget behind them, how it all works out. So I think you're right. Like right now, I think you can't really draw too many conclusions, but I see it as a as a win, and I think it's definitely something, I think when we move forward, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this. Here's an interesting thing, and I wonder how much this plays into it, because when you look at films that got released, but then immediately had to be pulled because of the lockdown. Sure. Movies like Onward, movies like um, uh, The Hunt, movies like Invisible Man which did not do nearly as well when they made the, the immediate quick jump to home streaming as some people thought it would. But then you get Trolls come out. And Troll does. Did it work to... Tro I'm just... I, I'm not saying this is. I'm just throwing this out there. Does it work... Did it work to Trolls benefit that it didn't open in theaters for a day or two first, like, say, Invisible... Well, Invisible Man was out more than just a couple of days. But like Invisible Man, like these other films, was that to its benefit? Did that play in its favor? Because I wouldn't have thought so, like, two weeks ago. But is that something that could have played in its favor? I thought absolutely. I, 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 because, look, the excitement... We all know about the opening weekend excitement that's generated. If people want to see movies, they want to see movies. And, and it is... Movies are pretty front-loaded, in that way. And the thing about Trolls was no one had seen it. And the people, the kids that were excited about it, the people that were excited about it, that liked the first movie, knew it was coming out. They were looking for it, you know, and, and they had that opening weekend excitement, whereas everything else, Bloodshot, The Hunt, they already had their opening weekend. So that initial wave of people that wanted to see those movies saw them in the theater. It's just that initial wave wasn't that big. So when they go to, but I'll, I'll tell you, John, I'd be curious to see what those numbers are over the course of this. Like, what does mm. it look like? What does the hunt look like a month on VOD? You know, or or what is same with Bloodshot? When you have a month of that, what does it look like? Because unlike movie theaters where you have this front loading of an audience going in, once something is on, you know, people catch up with it and they're like, oh, I forgot that was there and I'll watch it now. So I'd be curious to see what those numbers look like in a month or two. And then we and same with trolls. Like, how is it going to look in the long term? Right. I mean, if it follows traditional patterns, which once again, there's nothing traditional about this time. But nope. like, for instance, you look at Avengers Endgame. It made in its first full week out on digital, it made 30 million. Now, this is the biggest film of all time. Uh, made 30 million. Its second week, it made. I think they said nine. Um, so I, I don't know what if it's going to follow those patterns because I think you, what you said before is true. We're in uncharted territory right now. Yeah. There's there's just no it, – it's I'm being reminded more and more every day there's just no established paradigm that we can compare the current situa situation that we're in. Because I'll be honest, I, I would have thought that something like Invisible Man, which got such great reviews, such – fat and it's amazing. If you guys haven't seen Invisible Man – Check it out because it's it's great. But I would have thought that Visible Man having such great word of mouth and great reviews, getting such an early bump to to to, to VOD that if any film was going to have a really nice big bump, it would have been that. But the traditional model doesn't apply. I would have thought honestly that that Trolls and listen, Trolls is going to lose money, but I would have thought Trolls was harshly going to tank, harshly tank. But the standard models don't apply. And, and, and it did, in my interpretation, I think it did really well. I think it did exceedingly well. So I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff to go on with here, guys. Question is, 
What do you think about this? Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. And I'm sure we'll probably get around to this a little bit more in the uh, live questions part. All right.